Hello, Eric here, and this is a short little video about a specific concept that I think is confusing a number of people. And it's pretty common to see discussions about companies that are doing big uh, R&D projects, like SpaceX doing Starship. And there's a lot of discussion that says, after they finish developing this, and when they have it in production, before they can start taking profits, they're going to have to pay back the development cost. And that's what this talk is about. Do you need to pay back the development cost? So we're going to have a little company and we're going to be taking our current rocket and building a super rocket. So I'm going to start talking about, about cash flow and how cash flow works in most companies. So our company is called Rocketland and we make rockets and we sell them to customers. So when we sell these rockets to customers, we have sales money that comes into the company. In addition, we have costs that go along with the company. We have what's called COGS or cost of goods sold. And that is anything that is directly related to making those specific rockets. So the metal that goes into them, the electronics, the rocket engines, all of those sort of things are part of COGS. In addition, we have other costs that, that I would call overhead costs. So we have salary costs, um, we have equipment costs, factory costs, tool costs, uh, all the costs of the people in the buildings that do design, engineering, all of that. So those are what I would call fixed costs. And then if we're lucky, we take the sales numbers and we take the cost numbers and we end up with some profits from the company. So our sale numbers are bigger than our costs. And just to have some framing here, I've put some numbers on this. So we have about a million dollars in sales a year. Our cost is $700,000 and therefore we make $300,000. So the question is now, how are we going to fund Super Rocket? And we look around for money and there's, well, there's this really obvious source. We have the business is throwing off or creating $300,000 in profit uh, every year. So we're going to take that money and that's going to be part of our research and development budget. And we're going to be putting that towards Super Rocket. And this is something that's called self-funding. We are funding new development out of money that the company already has. And this is likely the most common way that companies fund new things. They have enough of a good business going that they have profits that they can afford to push into new ventures. And in general, good companies are spending most of their profits on new ventures. Um, it's when they get to be big and established and they can't figure out what new things to do that they start uh, giving profits back to investors. So this is pretty common. If you look at what SpaceX did when they developed reusability for Falcon 9, they had money coming in from sales and they had profits coming from the existing launches they were doing. So they could take their profits and spin them off towards research and development. So the key with self-funding, no repayment required. It doesn't matter how much you put into the research and development. It's not going to anybody that needs to be paid off. So if you self-fund, what does this mean? Well, it means your profits are down for a while, but with any luck, your profits will go up when you finish this new project. What happens if the money from profits isn't enough to do your project? So maybe you look at it and you say, well, Super Rocket is going to take us 25 years to develop if we only do it based on our profits, and that takes too long. Well, that means we need a different source of money. So what we can do is we can take a little bit of our company 
a little bit of rocket land and essentially sell it off to another entity. Might be another company, might be a set of investors. Um, in this case, it's a group called Spacio Pecunium, which means space money in Latin. So we give them or they purchase a small amount of ownership in our company for a given amount of money. In this case, I'm saying it's $5 million. From their perspective, they are making a bet on the company. The bet is that the future value of that part of the company we bought is going to be worth more than $5 million. And this is what is called equity funding because equity is ownership in the company. And this takes a lot of different forms. There's private equity, where someone will come in and invest. Um, some person or some group um, will come in and invest. Um, it's not really, com it's not really uh, open to everyone. And this is what venture capitalists do. Um, there is public equity, where someone will uh, do a public offering in various ways of doing this, and then they will get money uh, from stock that anybody can buy. So, uh, thing about equity funding, you don't have to pay it back. That $5 million is just money that comes into the company in exchange for that equity. Now, obviously, the people that invest hope that at some time in the future uh, that investment will pay off and they will get more than that amount of money back, but there's nothing contractual within the company that says, hey, you have to actually pay this physical amount of money back. So uh, if you know about the rocket world, you know lots of equity funding going on. So for SpaceX, both Starship and Starlink have a significant amount of equity funding coming in. Now, the problem with equity funding is each time you need a chunk of cash, you need to sell a bit of the company. And over time, you get what's called dilution. And basically that means whenever you sell a bit of the company off, the ownership stake of all the existing owners becomes less. So if you started out, if it was owned by a single person or if it was owned by employees, um, you've sold off part and that initial ownership is now less. And you see this very common in public companies. With stock, they will issue new stock. And guess what? If you issue a bunch of new stock, every existing share of stock is worth less. It's just the way the math works. So that can make your original investors, the first company that gives you equity, unhappy because they are getting diluted. So that's not good. Um, the other problem is if you sell enough of your company off, um, it can mean that somebody else owns more of the company than you do. And in some cases, that can mean they have control over your company. This isn't uncommon with venture capital uh, and small companies. And that may not be what you want. They may not run the company the way you think uh, the company should be run. But equity funding, very common. The third kind, you go out and you sell bonds. Or you go to a bank and you get loans. Uh, either of them uh, are done. Uh, both do similar things, and you get $5, uh, $5 million out of that. This is known as debt funding or debt financing. Basically, what I am doing is I am selling a bond, and the bond has specific terms. And it says, in return for you paying me a certain amount of money now, this is how you will get repaid. And you can think of bonds as being contractual. So um, I buy a bond for $100,000, and it says in five years um, they will pay me $120,000. Or it might say something different. How it works depends upon the specific bond. 
Some bonds make payments monthly, uh, some make payments quarterly, some make them yearly, some make no payments until the bond is fully finished or fully mature, as we would say. So lots of options there. And then there are also more traditional loans where you would go to a specific bank and the bank would loan you money on specific terms. Now, obviously the difference in debt funding to the other ones is that payment is required. You have a contractual obligation with these people to make those payments. Um, the only way that contractual obligation goes away is if your company ends up going bankrupt. And under bankruptcy, uh, things change and you will often see uh, bank loans specifically be renegotiated so a company doesn't go bankrupt. So that is the three ways that companies generally raise money. They either self-fund out of existing project, uh, profits that they have from existing products. They do equity funding where they sell part of the business to someone else in exchange for money, or they do debt funding. Now, self-funding is great for companies with existing customers, and it's really preferable for those sorts of companies. In space, we see a lot of startup companies, and many startup companies either don't have existing customers at all, or they don't have a big enough customer base to do what they want. That is why equity funding is used so often in space. Now, generally, it's mostly been uh, private equity that's, that's been done uh, because essentially going public, doing an initial public offering tends to be fairly expensive and takes a lot of work. Um, there are now this kind of hybrid approach where you create this small public company uh, and then you merge it with the private company. And that is how the private company essentially becomes public, uh, but in kind of an easier way of doing that. Um, the way of doing that is called a SPAC, a special something uh, acquisition corporation or company. Um, and for example, uh, Rocket Lab recently finished the SPAC process. So Rocket Lab is now publicly traded, but they didn't go the conventional route. So uh, anyway, we'll see lots of equity funding uh, for space. Debt funding. Uh, debt funding you don't really see in uh, the kind of space startups or space growing companies simply because they don't have a stable enough uh, track record for companies to be interested in them doing it. Um, now, you could also say the companies, the few companies that maybe are stable enough to make this practical are stable enough that they can uh, attract equity funding. And equity funding is generally nicer, assuming you don't give a, have to give away too much equity, because, as I said, you don't have to pay it back. So, to summarize, generally, they don't have to pay it back. So, any of these discussions where you see people talking about R&D cost um, and then the uh, uh, asserting that, well, they have to pay it back before they get money. Uh, they don't have to pay it back. They do need to get into a state where they're actually getting useful cash flow out of it. And that is how you would measure success rather than reaching enough to pay back some arbitrary amount. So, uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, please subscribe and please hit the like button. Thanks.